Hi and good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are watching this pre-recorded podcast with myself and Mr. Philip Brady. This is Philip and Dermatron's pre-match thoughts for Wolves versus Tottenham at Saturday half 12 kickoff, the last game before the international break. And before we get into it, Philip, how are you this evening? And see Liverpool lost again. Nice to see yeah, nice to see uh, your yeah. tippity clock clock cry. I'd say now I'd love to hear what he's moaning about this evening, but uh, yeah, they're beaten three two by Toulouse now, which Toulouse are hardly one of the real hot shots of French football, so it's a surprising mm. result there. And uh, mm. Brighton had a good win. Brighton beat Ajax again tonight. That's a double that got over them. But then again, everybody's beaten Ajax at the minute. They look a shadow with the team they used to be, even though they have one of our ex players in it, uh, Stephen Bergwijn. But it's a great result for Brighton, and I see Villa and West Ham are both drawing. So. Well, it's looking good. Look, we will give you a roundup of all the international games tomorrow in Newsbeat during our pre-match show. So, Philip, let's get into it. And look, we need to start really at the back. Look, we <laughs> look, we we've got Van der Ven out with a with a hamstring. We don't know how serious it is. Some people are saying he won't need surgery. Some people say he will need surgery. So we really won't know until the club come out with some sort of statement, one way or the other. Now we had Dyer and Hoybier at the back on 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 Monday at one stage. Um, there's Royale as well; he could play at centre back. There's Ashley Phillips. There's Dorrington. Where would you go, Philip? Where's your head at it? Where Where's your gut instinct telling you them two are going to start? Where are you going with it? it? Well, I think we know Eric Dyer is 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 a, is a certain starter anyway. Mm. That's for, that's for sure. Now, and that's going to cause a lot of aggravation to certain people but uh like let's face it then give a man credit he's he, he's been frozen out for the whole part of the season up to now he came on on monday night against chelsea and let's face it he did very very well in fact mm. he did score a goal which should have been allowed but the vagaries of var meant it wasn't we should have got an equalizer in that game so he's a dead starter uh i'm torn pierre emil hoybier is not a center back He's an emergency centre back, and why would, should we risk him against a team like Wolves, who are strong and busting up front, or should we give Ashley Phillips a run? If Ashley Phillips was an old bought for the future and probably wouldn't be expected to be making his first team appearances. Yes, but but circumstances dictate we need a centre back with pace. Eric mm-hmm. Dyer has none. Phillips has it to burn. So for that reason alone, I would throw him in on Saturday against Wolves. Yeah. Do you know what? I I understand what you're saying. I may disagree with you on that. I, I, I think you stick with the two centre backs we had on Monday, Hoybier and, and, and Dyer. I, I think you do, or you put Royale in there. He's got it really is. It's not an easy choice for, for Ange, is it? It really isn't. No. He's got to no. get this so right because of the way he plays, the way that his team play on the front foot with a high line. Dyer's got no pace. We all know that. But do do you put somebody on experience with pace in, or do you put somebody with experience and no pace? It, yeah, it's a very you, difficult decision. He's a tricky one. Uh, he's going to have sleep near nights over this one, isn't he? It's a, he will because I mean you've got Hoybio who's not exactly he's not exactly Usain Bolt either, you know. No. So I mean it's 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 you got to be a case of Wolves will be hoping those two play because they can get in behind us. It's, we've also got the problem. Ben Davis isn't fit either, so we've no genuine no, left true. back. If if Royale should move into the middle again, so okay, mm. we're hoping Poro is fit. We're hoping he's fit. So that means one of the one of the normal back four is playing, which is a horrendous thing to think of when you think that we've lost three of three of our back four in the space of one game, half a game against mm. Chelsea. You know, so I think um, I think I, I, my my back four, if it's at all possible, would be Poro. Dyer, Phillips, and Emerson Royale. Now, well, whether that's going to be the one, I don't know. Well, we are going to go through that. Me and Philip will give you our predicted lineup. Now, this predicted lineup is going to be half mine, half Philip. So we've got that coming up later in another pre record. We'll put that out tomorrow as well. So watch out for that. But let's see if me and Philip can agree. I don't yeah. think we will, but let's see if we can. And um, come up with some sort of a team to beat Wolves. Now, Philip, look, we've now got a problem with centre-backs. So that begs the question, 
has not signed in a second centre back come back to haunt us. Now, I'm you got a lot of fans that are going to say yes. Uh, I'm saying they did what they could. It was a great window, but who knows what we've got coming in January. Now, there is rumours out there we haven't got a lot of money to spend in January. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that sort of goes back to the main question. Is this coming to bite us on the arse? I think it was always a calculated risk to go in with just two main centre-backs and Eric Dyer as a backup, really. But I honestly think you couldn't legislate for what happened on Monday night. No, you couldn't. I've, you know, I don't think it's ever happened really, before, has it, that? No. To lose both our centre backs, one for sending off and one for injury, uh, so yeah, it may it may come back to haunt us. But I think they did all they could to get a second boy in it during the summer. It just didn't yeah. work out. Now it'll probably happen in January, whether it's a loan deal or whatever. They will get another centre back in. They have to basically, you know. So, well, I wouldn't say it's come back to haunt us. It might it might be that little nasty little noise at night you don't know where it's coming from it's not a haunting but it's, yeah. it's getting that, that direction if you know where i'm coming from yeah well going back to that then philip would you start phillips and dorrington as center backs they've played together in in the under 21s would you start them mm. as a pair no a bridge too far dumb i think that would really, really putting too two fast? putting two rookies in making their debut in the right. same game it's a recipe okay. for it, really. Anything anything can go wrong. Now, they might play the games of their lives, but I think we need a bit of experience in there, and Eric yeah. Dyer would provide that. Right. Fergie put a load of kids in at Man United. He got rid of the experience of players and played the kids. And everyone yeah, said no, that but you can't it, win nothing uh, with kids. Philip, if it's good enough for Manchester United back then, back in the day, and Alex Ferguson... It's good enough for us here at Tottenham. And we've played yeah, kids before, it. and they've always got... We, they've played, the, the thing is, I understand what you're saying, Philip, but they've played together, and they're under 21. So I know it's a different level, but they've got the understanding of one another. They know how each other works. So surely that should mean something instead of playing Eric Dyer, who, okay, he's got the experience, but he hasn't got the pace. Or you're not going to sit there with, my Eric Dyer cushion, which is now going to make a comeback. Me sitting like this, thinking, has he made a mistake yet, Philip? So yeah, I but Dermot, it. there's a hell of a difference between under 21 and chat and Premiership. It's well, absolute yeah. huge chasm. Yeah, we, I, 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 I would risk playing one of them. I would risk playing one of them. But I'll tell you one thing: you could destroy the confidence of both those guys if you played the two of them, and we got absolutely mullered on Saturday because of mistakes by the centre backs. I mean, I'm being cautious on this. I would play one of them. I play Phillips. I don't think Dorrington's quite reached that level yet. Anyway, uh, Phillips so, has because he's played in the he's played in the championship. Yeah. Dorrington has never played anything up to under 21. That's that's the height of his uh, of his, his experience. So from so, that point of view, and it's not it's not because I'm an Eric Dyer lover, but you cannot be a bit of experience in there. You so you're telling me. Experience. So you're telling me, Mr. Brady, the Irish Joe Dolan. Who's up there swinging around his 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 medallion? Do you know, get you're telling me that Eric Dyer cushion is making a comeback. I, I'm only is, saying it is making must. a comeback. Everyone, the yeah, Eric Dyer. Dyer look cushion. how well he did. Look how well he did on Monday night against Chelsea. Yeah, for the, face it, the, Chelsea are a better, a better team than Wolves. <laughs> My first words when I saw Eric Dyer coming on was, "Oh shit, we're going to lose." That was my yeah, right. Okay, that was, most people said that, but I mean, you know, I'm a realist. If I, I, I'll, I'll criticize so, someone for not doing their job and, and and not letting and letting the side down. But when he does the opposite, when he comes on and performs well I, and damn nearly gets us a point out of the game, then you've got to give him a little bit of credit. A hang on a minute, credit. Philip. I've praised him, so I have praised yeah. him. I've praised him how well yeah. he's played. So I'm a realist as well. I, he played well. But it doesn't yeah. mean, Philip, it doesn't mean how many times has he played? Look, how many times has Eric Dyer played for us in the past? Played a blinder one game. And then you see against Liverpool, he heads it straight into, he makes two cockots and we lose. He's cost us goals. How many mistakes did he cost us last season? And I know we were bad before, and I know we were awful. And I know Conte had us playing dreadful football. But can a leopard really change its spots? Can Eric Dyer suddenly become this great defender that he wasn't for for the last couple of years? 
I'm not expecting to become a great defender. All I want is to do is come on and do what he did against Chelsea. Nothing more than that. And that, to me, can? is a better... Yes, I do. Of course he can. I, I, I'm more confident in Dyer doing that than I haven't put in throwing young Dorrington in for a baptism of fire in an away game against Wolves. When Wolves will smell, smell blood because of the lack of, of defenders that we have fit and are able to play on Saturday. That is why I've played Dyer. His experience is worth a lot more than Dorrington's eagerness to get into the side. So I think it's, oh. it's, they've got to play... Um, yep. Okay, Dyer, Dyer is definitely playing, whether it's Hoybier or, or Phillips alongside him. As you said, Andrew will be having sleepless nights over that one. I would not like to know what way he's going to come down. If Hoiberg plays, fair enough. My worry there is with absolutely no pace. That's the one thing middle. is, Philip, whoever does get picked will get our 100% support on Saturday. Oh, they will, of course. Yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah. they will, of course. But, yeah. but I mean, I, I, I just think for, for, for caution, uh, I think it's too much of a risk to play Dorrington and Phillips. Yeah. Now, Velez. Now, mm -hmm. look, we've got Richardson going in for a groin injury, which may have told me it was a hip injury, which it wasn't. It was a groin no, injury. Groin. You were right. Groin, yeah. You were right. Yeah. I never heard of a pub pubic pub pubic yeah, it's a, it's a um, groin area. It's a groin area. Um, hip operation, but they I never knew it was on your it was on your hip, but there you go. You learned something mm -hmm. you and then maybe Ramara says we don't know, Philip, but that's another subject and another show. Um <laughs> And midnight and beyond. Yeah, yeah midnight mm -hmm. and very beyond. Now, we've got Young <laughs> Velez, we've got Richarlison out, we've got Sonny playing up front, we've got Johnson and Kulu. So, you're yeah. saying to you did say to me, should Velez get a start on Saturday? Should mm. he at least be on the bench? At least? Oh, he has to be on the bench. He has to be on the bench. Now, I don't know. I, I, I think uh, Brennan Johnson was very unlucky to be mm. subbed on Monday night because it needs Moss with Romero getting sent off. Mm. But I think I think the front three will be Kulu on the right, John, Johnson on the left, and Son down the middle. Sonny up but front. Say, say we need a bit of height in the game later on. Say we're chasing mm. the game later on. Good man to bring on. He's good in the air. He's lethal in the air. So we could bring him on and uh, to add a bit of power up front. But I think he is definitely going to get game time now. The fact that Ricardoson is no. going to be out for an unspecified <clears throat> length of time. Uh, apparently, he's only going to be out for a couple of weeks. Apparently. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Like, if this can play well, it could be a long world back for him. Mm. Now, you know? we've got Madison now has been declared fit by the England manager. He's now been picked now for the next two European qualifiers. Yeah, but is he fit for Saturday? I don't give a toss about England. Is he fit for us on Saturday? That's no, more important than look, me. That, that, Philip, you know what I'm, what I'm, only, I'm only, yeah, I'm giving well, I'm you only, the I'm saying, yeah, do, you know, do you know where I'm coming from? It's okay yeah. for, for Southgate to say, oh, he's going to play for England. England don't pay his wages. We do. And I want him in that side on Saturday. We need him. Well, I think I think he will be, Philip. I think he'd be fit enough. Look, I, look if he's not, Dermot, end, who would you put in? If he's not, who would you put in? I, I'll, I'll tell you that when we do our predicted lineup because I want to surprise yeah, you okay. with that. I've got okay. a plan for that. Now, last Ooh, thing, Philip. Cunning plan. Cunning plan, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like like Ham Hannibal would say to BA, I've got a plan for that. And you say, shut up, you fool. Right. Um, <laughs> now, as much as we hate losing to Chelsea on Monday, Philip, as much as it was a game we could be proud of of the team, but tearing our hair out at the same time because of the defeat. Mm -hmm. And hearing Chelsea, hearing Jason Cundy, an ex-player of ours, by the way, um, oh, an bursting asshole. into a, you know, has anyone seen Tottenham? Well, has anyone seen Chelsea, Mr. Cundy? You're playing crap. Yeah. Um, you only beat us because we had nine men. Eleven men, we were well. cutting you. We were like a knife through hot butter. And as for the referee, a word about him. If Casper the Ghost came on, Philip, right, he would have booked him. Oh, that yeah. referee was useless. Yeah. But that, yeah. look, we're going to go in there. He lost in, control in, after the match. He lost control of the match yeah. earlier. Philip, on. we discussed control. that on our podcast. Because I've yeah. got, I'm really going to go through VAR on our podcast. That's going to be the main mm -hmm. thing, VAR. And I'm, I'm going to let you go on referees. I will on that show. Um, <laughs> was Chelsea defeated character building? And very quickly, I think it was. I, I think it proved to Ange what his players are capable of. I think it proved to us fans that they do care. They care about yeah. the shirt. They care about the badge. There, there yeah. is, there is a, a dynamic in that team that we haven't seen since well before Poch. Mm. And whatever Mourinho, Conte, Nuno have tried to break the foundations of the spirit of Bill Nick and 
the go and the the spirit of the whole the um the soul of what Tottenham are about. And just come in, repair the foundation. He's now building the house, Tottenham Hotspur again. So it was character building. W- will he take more out of that defeat than he would if that was a win? Right. Well, tr- take cash your mind back six, seven, eight months ago. Right. If Tottenham had lost four one to anybody, not just Chelsea at mm-hmm. home, what would the crowd reaction have been? Booed. What was the crowd reaction at games that we lost at home last season? Booze all over the place. We what do we get AC on Monday Milan. night? Yeah, what do we get on Monday night? A, a standing ovation. Cheered off the pitch with a standing ovation. I'm that playing shows glory, you. glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Exactly. That shows you how much this team has come on under Ange. Mm. We've got characters in that team. We've got backbone. We've got spirit. Something was completely lacking under Conte. And I think that, 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 that we will take more from that win or that defeat on Monday night than Chelsea will. Chelsea will go in against Manchester City. Oh, yeah, we beat Spurs. And Manchester City will crucify them on, on, on Sunday. Hmm. I hope they don't, actually. It's the one game I want Chelsea to win because if we win on yeah. Saturday, we'll stay top of the league over the international you know, I'm break. very, I'm very yeah, tempted it's to do... character building. Yeah, I'm very tempted to do watch along to that game because it does it, it does involve us. If we're a top, it will involve us. So, look, we'll see what happens. Look, for me, it was character <laughs> building, Philip. <laughs> I think imagine doing a watch along and wanting Chelsea to win a match. It doesn't sit right with me at all. <laughs> it doesn't sit right with me either. But um, I'll be getting my Chelsea cushion out again. But look, for me, it proved to Ranch that these players care. They do care. Yep. Look at Hoy B's reaction when that ball went over the top of the crossbar off the line. Did his reaction, yep. Philip, said everything I needed to know how yep. Hoy Bier feels yep. about Tottenham. And yeah. and how yeah. that shirt he wears, yeah. and anyone that, that says Hoybier moment... needs to go, I am sorry. Watch that second half. Watch that match against mm. Chelsea. Everything you need to know about Hoybier was in that match, and that yeah. is why I love the guy. That is why I did a debate and I wanted him to stay. Yeah. You want to? You want seventy minutes of what Hoybier is all about? Chelsea, Tottenham, Chelsea Monday. Just watch it, and you you it, it, it was it was for me. We were backs against the wall. We we're in the trenches. We we're being overrun. There was your man. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, I, I mean, I'm with you. I want I want Hobie to stay, but uh, and I think that I think that Monday night will probably prove to Angie he, he needs him in the squad. He really mm-hmm. does. Yeah. And uh, like you know, let's face it. We we always said we've said it all along. There's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be yeah. setbacks. Monday night was a setback, but I think that that's mm. a setback that could be turned into a huge positive mm. for the way the crowd reacted to a four-one defeat. Now, Philip, what are you going for a result on Saturday? What's your score prediction? I'm going two-one to Spurs. He's gone. Yeah, I am going for. I'm actually. Do you know what I did? I did a prediction today for Dave, and I went from one-one to one-nil. Do you know what? I'm getting more. I'm starting to get deluded now. I'm starting to get more. Starting, starting I'm to. starting. I'm starting <laughs> to. Right. The the, the hard hats coming. The holes are going in the walls. I'm going to start running around. Derva's going to have to lock me in a room, right, until until nine o'clock Saturday morning to let me out because I'm going to be like Romero, like in a dark room. It, He'll have a picture of of that Michael Oliver, right? And Mia's going to have to feed them steaks just to just <laughs> to um. I'll take the raw steaks, there. raw steaks. Yeah, I do you know up there to keep going. Um, I'm going for three one Tottenham. There you go, very good. Yeah, I mean, it could well be, could well be. I mean, we're not we're not the soft touch anymore. We are a hardened no. outfit there that will not lie down. And even even if we're losing. But by in the fifth minute of injury time, we'll still be going for the equaliser or going for the winner if we're drawing, and that's the way it should be, and that's where yeah. we expect it to be. And and as Ange says, that's who we are, mate. That's, that's what he says. Are, that's mate. who that's we it. are. That's it. That's I, that's I mean it. that. You, I, look, I I don't I don't look. <laughs> I said to Derval, I've actually fallen in love with Ange, <laughs> and I know that sounds Ooh. weird, but you can help mm. it though, Philip. You can yeah. help, but. Not believe what he's doing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That there's yeah, something about true. him, like he takes you by the scruff of the neck, and and right, 
believe in what I'm doing. And you're there as a fan going, oh, we had Conte, we had Mourinho, we had Nuno. And you see this fella come in, it's like the pay, it's like the, it's like St. Patrick, right? Taking all the snakes out of Ireland. Yeah. He's charismatic. That's what he's, he's yeah. He's charismatic. That, he's got that a is what he's aura doing. about him. Yeah. There, there's a Bill Nick, a Keith Birkinshaw vibe about him. He's yeah. like, he may be Australian, Philip, right? It's like he takes no shit Yorkshireman with this, mm, no with a bit Australian. of Aussie in him. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Did, yeah. Do you see what the, can you see the resemblance between him and Bill Nick very quickly before we end? Is, is there a well, resemblance? Between... <laughs> not physically, not physically. But I think the, what he brings out of the team, yes. What he, what he, what he gets out of the team. and what and the, like the, the, the double team and the team in the 60s would have gone through a brick wall for, for Bill Nick. Yeah. I think this team will go the same for Conte, if me, or Conte. Jeez, we can go through. A, we can go through a paper bag for him. Uh, they go for part for pile of pots. Jeez, what's wrong with me? For pots to cock. I, I just quit yeah. while you're ahead. Hang on. I, I just played this I six. I just played this six minute interlude while Philip just gets his thoughts together. Welcome to my party. We're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare start. There you go. Philip is now. It's okay, I'm back again now. Yeah, it's Philip is now taking his medication and he's fine now, everyone. So don't worry, he's taking his tablet, so he's okay now. Oh, right. Who is our manager? Um, um, Arthur Postacoglu. No, sorry, Arthur. Ange oh, Nicholson. Oh, oh, Ange Nicholson. Um, Do you know what? Ke- Philip, Keith just Mourinho. say good night. Just um, say good night. <laughs> good night, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> right. Please like and subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is our last one before the international break, Philip. The predicted lineup will be out as well later, so please watch out for that. Me and Philip, of course, are back tomorrow at four with the pre-match show where we'll go over the whole game. We're going to go over more in depth than our predicted lineup. We're going to show you where the game's on, how can you watch it, the injuries. And then we're going to go through who's actually going to pick. And then, of course, Saturday, a quarter past 12, me and Philip are here for the watch along with Wolverhampton Wonders against Tottenham. And Philip, we're also coming out with a new little show as well tomorrow it'll probably come out saturday morning um or yeah. before the game it's called um what's it called again history corner is it the history uh, yeah history yeah we're going to call it the, the, the Tottenham. actually we haven't really decided we were talking about the Tottenham's Tottenham history corner we're, we're going to come out with something Tottenham, Me and Tottenham's Phil- history corner yeah yeah we're going to delve through the archives of tottenham against wolves and we're going to go we're going to pick some matches out and of course phillips Great, great uncle, Philip Brady, who Philip is named after, was there at the 1921 Cup Final with his grandchildren and also his wife called Mary. So Mary was there. There is a picture of Mr. Brady driving out with Tottenham and the Cup. So we want to know how he wiggled that. So Philip will give you all the lo- all the lowdown on that. We did Still try to find here, a video of him, but we Still couldn't find here. one. Mm. Do you? You never yeah, give it no. back to them. No, no. On that bombshell, we should leave it there. Good night. God bless. We'll see Good you night. later. Come on, you Spurs in Big Andrew. Come trust. on, you Spurs.